this is Matt from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by AppliancePhysio.com. Okay, uh, well, what we got here is a hot point dishwasher. It's going to be made by GE. Uh, the customer's complaint is that it's not working properly, which is kind of a vague, you know, a vague uh, diagnostic diagnostic process. Um, what we're going to do is just put the lash closed, turn it to the start, and we're just going to kind of run this through a cycle. It's going to kind of advance the timer slowly till we hear it start to fill, which is right there. Uh, while that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom panel. That way we can check for leaks. Alright, uh, you got two Phillips screws here and two quarter inch down at the bottom. Uh, you can use a quarter inch nut driver for all four of them. This particular dishwasher is kind of notorious for a leak on the drain solenoid down at the motor pump assembly. Uh, they'll tend to leak while they're draining out. So that's something that you always want to check for whenever you're working on one of these is you always want to pull the bottom panel. Okay, uh, well, what we got here on the underside, this is going to be the drain solenoid. And what that does is during the drain cycle, uh, we'll energize and pull down on the diverter uh, the motor will stay running in the same direction it'll just divert pull that down and divert the water out the drain line uh, a lot of times where you'll get your leaks are right up here at the seal when that's when that's in the drain cycle I mean really the only true fix to that would be to replace the whole motor pump assembly uh, they do sell the drain solenoids separate but a lot of times you have issues with with getting them to seal up properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start this dishwasher back up. It's in the wash cycle and I'm gonna advance the timer until we hit the drain. And you'll see the drain solenoid pull down. It's right there, it's in the drain cycle. Once it evacuates the water, that drain solenoid should lift back up on its own. Water pressure actually kind of holds it down. So what we're getting is pretty slow drain on this particular unit so what we're going to check is something on the inside that's called a piston and nut assembly. But now it's already starting to fill back up and it had not not evacuated all the water yet so we're going to get to the inside here. Okay uh, so what we're going to do here we're going to go ahead and open it up uh, we're going to get some access to the piston and nut assembly. We'll pull the rack out here. And piston and nut is, not all models have it, but it's going to be located behind this cover here. You got uh, two quarter inch screws. on each side of it. Usually you can just use your hands and sort of twist it out. And this one is actually still good. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and twist it out. And you got your little 
gasket right here. Um, what that does is kind of pushes up when it's in the drain cycle and you want it to make a good seal around the, the edge here. Uh, this one is actually still going to be good. Uh, usually what's going to happen if this is bad, this whole rubber piece will be all eroded down and instead of being about the size of a quarter, it's about the size of a dime and it doesn't seal up properly. You got a big gap when you're looking at it from the top there. Uh, an indication of one of these being bad would be it'll still drain, but it just drains very slow. Your drain is just a trickle that's coming out the drain line. But this one's good, so go ahead and put that back in. What you want to do, kind of just stick your finger in there. Uh, I've seen before where a piece of glass is kind of wedged around there, so it'll cause intermittent drain issues. But that's totally clear on the inside there. Let's go ahead and tighten that down hand tight and put the cover back on pop the two quarter inch screws back in here Now we're going to check down in the sump assembly here, see what we have going on. Wrench screw. That's going to lift right off. And then you got kind of a little drain cover. Right down there, that's going to pop right off. And just kind of feel down in. See if you feel anything restricted. Uh, there's kind of a, a miniature garbage disposal piece, like a macerator blade, that's down here that, in a screen that will sort of chop up the big chunks of food. Just want to make sure that that screen is clear. Which that screen is clear, I don't feel anything on the screen and there's no debris down in there so that's all set I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble there That's about all you can check on the inside. Alright, well what I'm going to do, uh, just a one final check before we say it's an issue internally on the motor, uh, is we're going to pull the drain line. You got, uh, this one actually has two different clamps on it. Going to just take those off that hook to the garbage disposal. And snake a piece of water line, a quarter inch water line, through the drain just to make sure there's not any kind of a possible free floating restriction that's coming through there. Okay, well we already loosened up this first clamp. We're gonna get this one here, which is a 5 16 Got both of those loose. I'm gonna have some water in the drain line. But you got that's not a huge diameter. It'd be pretty easy to get plugged up. I'm just gonna take the quarter inch line and sort of snake right through there. Let's just kind of push it through as far as you can. You'll kind of be able to tell when you're hitting hitting the wall of the dishwasher. This is usually effective if you've got a lot of fat that clogs up the the disposal line. Uh, a lot of times people will make tacos or whatever and dump the fat down the disposal and if the disposal or if the drain line doesn't have a good elevation then it just sinks down and clogs up the the drain line like a clogged artery and the dishwasher can't get rid of the water 
So if you snake it out like that, usually you're able to, to clear it out and get it draining. I'm just kind of sticking it in from the other side here, making sure that disposal is clear. There is a knockout on the disposal that sometimes, you know, if you just recently install the disposal, you have to knock a little punch out on the inside there to where if you forget to do that, the dishwasher will not drain also. We'll go ahead and hook this back up here. We know the whole drain line is clear. Tighten our clamps down and run one more test cycle. Well, after we've snaked the drain line out, we're just going to run it through one more test cycle, flip the latch closed, advance the timer till you hear the water start coming in. You don't want to click too far forward because this is not, just a timed fill, so if you miss part of that fill cycle, it might not fill up with enough water and then you won't know if it's draining out properly because you know it might only be draining half the water out. You want to make sure you get a full fill and a full drain to check operation. Okay, while well it's stopped filling, uh, it's in the wash cycle. We're going to go ahead and advance the timer until we hear the solenoid pull down and see if it's going to drain out for us. There's the drain solenoid pulling down. Pretty good drain now. You should kind of hear the pump sort of labor towards the end when the tub is empty. Okay, uh, well, after we snake the drain line out, uh, that did seem to clear the restriction that, that was in the drain line. And it is draining out all the water completely, so we should be all set to go. Thanks for watching another quality video from appliancevideo.com.